Hey everyone, Adam Simmons here from DGTL Infra, short for Digital Infrastructure. Autonomous vehicles have gained a lot of attention in recent years. However, the underlying technologies that support them, such as 5G and digital infrastructure, are less understood. In part two of this two-part series, I'm going to give you an overview of how 5G is acting as a key enabling technology for the development of autonomous vehicles. We're going to discuss some key initial use cases of 5G in autonomous vehicles and how this all ties in to a greater need for digital infrastructure. You'll gain a clear understanding about the technology behind autonomous vehicles. So stay tuned and I'll break this all down for you. Before I do, be sure to subscribe to the DGTL Infra channel and turn on the notifications so you don't miss my next in-depth video that is coming out soon. Now, let's jump into the video. So first, starting with a bit of history. In 2G and 3G wireless technologies, the automotive industry, with its established manufacturers, supply chains, and technology systems, did not have much of a partnership with telecommunications. However, in 4G, the automotive supply chain and technology systems of the vehicle began to be disrupted by cellular technology, with the introduction of telematics connecting the vehicle to the internet. In 5G, user experience, including the way in which users drive the vehicle, service the vehicle, and interact with the vehicle, is now being driven by an experience akin to that of the smartphone. Further, in the 4G period during 2013 to 2014, only two licensees, which were LG and Gemalto, developed Cellular Vehicle to Everything, or CV to X, services and only two automakers, General Motors and Audi, launched Cellular Vehicle to Everything, or CV2X, services. In comparison, 5G has eight licensees developing and more than 18 automakers working on launches. Automakers are targeting 2021 to 2023 for their launches of CV2X services with 5G, which underscores the tremendous momentum with 5G technology. It's worth reiterating a couple points about 5G from one of our prior videos titled The Truth About 5G, because 5G differentiates itself from prior generations of wireless technology like 4G in many distinct ways. So 5G is an enabler of autonomous vehicles because it has lower latency, whereby 5G networks can deliver 5 to 10 times lower latency as compared to 4G. 5G can offer increased speeds, whereby 5G speeds have the potential to reach 10 gigabits per second, which compared to 4G could be 100 times faster. 5G allows for higher density or a greater number of connected devices on the network. So specifically, 5G has the ability to support 10 times as many connected devices per square kilometer of network versus 4G and you can think that that will become really important with more and more autonomous vehicles on the road. And then finally, added capacity or network throughput also improves drastically with 5G. So 5G will increase network throughput, which is the amount of data that goes through a tower cell site by 100 times. With those improvements of 5G in mind, let's touch on briefly how the different governments around the world are allocating dedicated spectrum for autonomous vehicle development so that it can be used in a 5G network. So the allocation of clean spectrum to cellular vehicle to everything technology is important to allow the technology to function safely where vehicles can communicate with each other in an undisturbed frequency. The ultimate goal for CV2X is to have a global harmonized chunk of spectrum in the 5.9 GHz band. Most countries allocated this high bandwidth mid-band spectrum using the 5.9 GHz spectrum bands for dedicated vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communications. In the United States, the Federal Communications Commission, or FCC, reserved one block of 75 megahertz in the 5.9 gigahertz spectrum band to be used by intelligent transportation. In Europe, the European Telecommunications Standards Institute allocated a block of 30 megahertz in the 5.9 gigahertz spectrum band for intelligent transportation systems. The European Commission is also pushing for technology neutrality in the 5.9 gigahertz band. China is truly a leader in the cellular vehicle to everything, or CV2X, push by making it their technology of choice. 
China has allocated a 50 MHz block in the 5.9 GHz spectrum band to autonomous vehicles, with pilot trials for a soft launch currently in progress. In Japan, they have in fact allocated both low band and mid band spectrum for autonomous vehicle purposes. So first an 80 MHz block has been allocated in the 5.8 GHz spectrum band, and then another 9 MHz block has been allocated in the 700 MHz spectrum band by Japan. Finally, South Korea has allocated a 70 MHz block in the 5.9 GHz spectrum band. So once a global standard for spectrum is established, CV2X needs to establish the infrastructure capable of facilitating communication in the form of roadside units, which have built-in cameras and sensors. Identifying when road work is ongoing is an example of the functionality which these roadside units facilitate. Information on ongoing road work will be broadcast over the CV2X system to all vehicles on the road, allowing the roads to talk to the vehicles. Therefore, reliance does not have to be placed on solely vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communications in order to identify changes in road or driving conditions. So 5G innovations are driving accelerated improvements and comprehensive system integrations for automotive applications. Currently there are over 100 million vehicles on the road with 4G, LTE, and 5G modems. These systems support automotive trends in telematics, infotainment, advanced driver assistance programs known as ADAS, autonomous driving, and cloud mobile solutions. There are several ways that exist in which vehicle connectivity will utilize the 5G network and includes the Cellular Vehicle to Everything, or CV2X services, that we discussed before. And also like previously discussed, those services are categorized as follows. So you have Vehicle to Vehicle, or V2V. You have Vehicle to Infrastructure, or V2I. You have Vehicle to Network, or V2N. And you have Vehicle to Pedestrian, or V2P. But beyond CV2X, the 5G network will also be leveraged in a number of different ways. So for example, automaker OEM services, such as over-the-air software updates, upgrades, or different packages that they want to offer consumers within the car will be transmitted over a 5G network. Additionally, by connecting to a 5G network, vehicles will be able to have even more precise positioning on the road, and that precision will be at lane-level accuracy anywhere, anytime, using the Global Navigation Satellite System, or GNSS. And finally, the 5G network brings connectivity for passengers. So content can be downloaded for the vehicle's high resolution multiple displays, including video, premium audio, three-dimensional maps, and personalization settings. The first autonomous vehicle use case powered by 5G is Cellular Vehicle to Everything, or CV2X. So Cellular Vehicle to Everything, or CV2X platforms help vehicles communicate with each other and everything around them. CV2X platforms help provide a 360 degree non-line of sight awareness and a higher level of predictability for improved road safety and features that will be used for autonomous driving. Let's discuss two specific examples of the benefits from this cellular vehicle to everything or CV2X technology. So collision avoidance is a particular benefit of CV2X. Enhanced road safety is one benefit of CV2X by connecting the vehicle to its environment through V2V, which is vehicle to vehicle, V2I, which is vehicle to infrastructure, and V2P, which is vehicle to pedestrian communications over the 5G network for latency sensitive or data intensive use cases such as collision avoidance. So this CV2X technology is estimated to be able to save over 1 million lives in the coming decades by helping to fix minor driving mistakes that could have severe consequences. For example, let's think of a situation where one vehicle is not using its blinker on a highway and decides to change lanes to the left, while another vehicle in that left lane is deciding to switch lanes to the right at the same time. Through CV2X, both vehicles will know the consequence of making that lane change and will stop the vehicles from changing lanes, avoiding a collision. Another example benefit of CV2X technology is sensor sharing. 
Sensor sharing will allow transportation to become more efficient through deeper coverage by connecting vehicles to dense road infrastructure. Think sensors and traffic cameras over the 5G network. So these network connected vehicles will no longer be restricted by line of sight limitations, rather they will have eyes everywhere through this infrastructure. The second autonomous vehicle use case powered by 5G is known as infotainment, which can also be known as the intelligent cockpit or the digital cockpit. So the vehicle user experience is heavily influenced by cellular, and because of this, the automakers are seeking ways in which to enhance their infotainment offering. Rich in-vehicle experiences will be provided by high-resolution multi-displays, video for passenger displays, premium audio experiences, and three-dimensional maps. Enhanced 5G network communication with fast and reliable access will facilitate these in-vehicle experiences. And it is the automakers that want to deliver a user experience to their customers, particularly focused on providing services over the 5G network. Specifically, they want to provide things like over-the-air updates, allowing the vehicle to update or repair itself while driving or while parked overnight in the owner's garage. And this eliminates the need for vehicle owners to have to visit auto service centers to obtain the same type of upgrades. Ultimately, automakers want the ability to offer over-the-air upgrades or packages similar to the functionality of an app store on a smartphone or an in-home entertainment system. So examples of what some of these packages could be include a remote surveillance mode on a vehicle, which enables the ability to use the ultrasonic sensors and the cameras on a vehicle to determine if the vehicle's alarm system was triggered by an attempted break-in or was a false alarm set off by an innocuous contact. Another example is driver and occupant monitoring to monitor for things like drowsiness, medical status, fitness, wellness, and personalization purposes. And third is what you see in the top left part of your screen, which is known as a heads up display or HUD display, which will allow for augmented reality, natural voice prompts, natural language processing, and gesturing. Therefore, the driver does not have to look down to push controls or touch screens. They will be able to keep their eyes on the road and hands on the wheel. The driver can utilize augmented reality representations of the road and be able to adjust driving controls through non-physical means, such as through voice or gestures. A recent KPMG survey found that 85% of automakers think that in the future, the digital ecosystem for automotive think this app store will generate much higher profits than the vehicle itself. Moving to the third autonomous vehicle use case powered by 5G, which is Advanced Driver Assistance Programs, known as ADAS, and Autonomous Driving. So ADAS and Autonomous Driving will rely on 5G's step function improvement in speed, latency, and capacity to deliver on their promise for new levels of safety, efficiency, and convenience for consumers. Implementation will be through a progressive, staged adoption of driver assistance features over the next few years, as you see by the different levels. Features including sign recognition, emergency braking, and adaptive cruise control are going to be key areas of enhancement for ADAS and autonomous driving for the next five years or more. Particularly relevant for ADAS is artificial intelligence which plays an incredibly central role in being able to provide adjustable and continuously improved algorithms. These enhanced algorithms will allow drivers to slowly and incrementally reduce their control of the functions that govern the vehicle and instead let the machines handle them. With the larger amounts of data created as a result of artificial intelligence, 5G acts as a fast transport mechanism to data centers which ultimately provides central locations for processing that information with artificial intelligence technology for its use then in autonomous vehicles. And this ties in well with our next use case. So the fourth autonomous vehicle use case powered by 5G is cloud management. Autonomous vehicles will generate data at unprecedented scale. Therefore, access to the cloud is critical to process data because local processing power within the vehicles will not be sufficient. Cloud connectivity will begin extending itself closer to the network edge in order to take advantage of the low latency that is enabled by 5G. 
With this edge architecture, computational offload is possible, whereby data is sent from a vehicle to what is called an edge data center. For example, in order for autonomous driving to develop further, artificial intelligence is a fundamental technology that is being incorporated into the ecosystem. However, to be used in autonomous vehicles, artificial intelligence processing cannot be done in the cloud and sent back to the vehicle because there is too much latency in that round trip path. Therefore, all that processing needs to be done on the device, which in this case is the vehicle itself or at edge data center locations, which can mitigate the latency issues of the cloud by being physically closer to the vehicle. So with that final use case of how autonomous vehicles are powered by 5G, it's a good segue into how autonomous vehicles fit into digital infrastructure. So if we recall that the four sectors of digital infrastructure include towers, data centers, fiber, and the combination of small cells and distributed antenna systems. So first, cellular towers send critical signals to these autonomous vehicles. The Internet of Things sensors powering vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle and vehicle-to-infrastructure technologies reside on small cell infrastructure. And ultimately, at the edge of those networks, there are applications sitting in either edge data centers or being backhauled or front-hauled to a network operation center known as a NOC. This is where the artificial intelligence sits that really drives the autonomous vehicle, delivering a precise set of parameters and performance. So as mentioned previously, edge data centers and edge computing are one of the critical pieces of digital infrastructure that facilitates autonomous vehicles. So data consumption by autonomous vehicles is massive because the vehicle is constantly processing its onboard mapping data and sending that information back and forth to the cloud to ensure that the map has not changed. These changes could take the form of debris in the road or a road closure, so it's important for that constant connection. However, the majority of the time the vehicle's map has not changed, and thus the autonomous vehicle does not need to update its onboard maps in real time. Therefore, sending that mapping information back to a cloud data center, such as in Northern Virginia, which is a key data center hub, does not make a whole lot of sense, because most of the data is unnecessary and it has not changed. By using edge compute and 5G networks, the autonomous vehicle can filter out the data that has not changed at an edge data center location and only send back to the cloud the data that needs to be analyzed, which can then update the system. By having this intermediate edge compute step, it allows 5G networks to operate much more efficiently. Given the volume of data which will be processed for autonomous vehicles, edge computing and edge data centers will be an absolute necessity in the future. So we spoke about how autonomous vehicles will rely on cellular towers, small cells, and now data centers to function. And then the fourth piece of digital infrastructure is fiber, which really connects all of those pieces of infrastructure together and transmits the data at the speed of light to allow for low latency communications that 5G can offer and autonomous vehicles need to function. So hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, then please share it with somebody you think might also find it helpful and consider subscribing to DGTL Infra and visit us at dgtlinfra.com for more of the latest news on digital infrastructure. Thank you for watching this video. Be sure to like the video and post in the comments telling me what benefits of autonomous vehicles you are most excited about. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.